Now, we looked at this component, which is the point list display. Let's look at another um, component, which is really quite nice, called text tag. Now, the text tag is really interesting because it will display whatever text you want to see in the, in the display in Rhino. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this into T. Okay, so this is going to be the text that I would like to see. And the location of this text will actually be the center of every one of these spaces. But if you notice, right now we don't have that. And beautiful thing about um, right, uh, Grasshopper is that we have under mesh and analysis a lot of functionality here, one of which is mesh area. Now, you might say, well, why are we using mesh area if we already have the area? Well, if you notice, mesh area also returns centers, or in the case of geometry, what we would refer to as, uh, or in the case of mesh geometry, a centroid. So I'm just going to take that into here, and we'll see that what's returning to us is actually the area centroid of the entire mesh. And what we're looking at here is data, right, that has to do more with the centroid, right, of each of these basic elements. So let's see if there's another one that we could use. Face normals. Interesting. So the mesh into here indicates that here we can actually calculate the face normals and centroids here, the mesh centroid, and here the mesh components. Now, that's really interesting because you can see that the, the mesh does have a centroid at the center of the entire mesh, but the elements of the mesh also have centroids. So let's go ahead and use those to display this text. Awesome. And if we zoom in, you should now be able to see that each element is a quad composed of the surrounding vertices. Great. This is really the, the basic introduction to meshes. Now, there's one more component to a mesh, which is going to be really important for us to understand. Um, that is the edges. And if you notice back in analysis, we have here a component called mesh edges. Now let's drop that down. And I'm just going to group this and say mesh edges. We'll connect our mesh again. When I select this, you should be able to see that um, we have here all of the edges selected. You might turn the previews off of um, some of the other components, the plane or rectangle. And the mesh primitive. We can now see that these um, are selected uh, and displayed here in the Rhino view core. Now, there are three outputs for the mesh edges, and we're not going to get into this yet. We will come back and, and discuss this in just a little while. Um, but this has to do with which of the edges are actually being um, displayed. Here you can see that we have edges 
along the border, which only have one adjacent face. And on the interior, we have edges which share two faces. Right? That's very important. That's what we saw when we were looking at the slide with the quad and the triangle. Now I'm going to leave this up for just a moment um, and make sure that everybody is able to, to get this. Now I'm going to add some labels really quick. Here we have our face commands. Remember, this is our text tag, which is a really great tool. One of the things that Gil and I um, really like to do in our Grasshopper files are um, include as much visual information as possible. Uh, this is our point list display. So that when you're working um, in Rhino, you can see right um, the data that's actually being uh, used to construct the various uh, geometry that you're building out. Here's our controls. Now, again, if you were to manipulate, right, however many faces you have, we can see we have only um, a single uh, face here. We only have four vertices. And if I kick this up to two and two, we can see we now have four basic elements. Each are quads, each composed of the surrounding vertices. So we have a question. Um, do meshes have a UV space? Um, a U meshes do not have a UV space um, the way that um, you are familiar with UV spaces uh, with regards to surfaces. Okay, a mesh is only a collection of basic elements, either quads or triangles um, in Rhino, just quads or triangles that are used uh, to define um, a basic uh, primitive or, uh, or mesh. So you don't have a UV space. What you have is a network. You have a topology network. And that network uh, describes the connectivity right, of the basic elements which comprise the aggregate mesh. Um, somebody also asked a question about can you have n gone mesh faces. Um, in Rhino, you can have quads and triangles, okay, quads and tries, um, as your basic uh, primitives or basic uh, elements. Now, uh, there are other software out there that allow you to have um, a totally different uh, kind of relationship of, of number of sides and vertices, etc. But in Rhino, you can only have uh, triangles and quads. All right, so let's do this. Let's go ahead and set our face count in width and height to three by three. So this is going to give us three faces in the width, three faces in the height, and I'm going to set my uh, my square to be four units. Go ahead and take your mesh primitive, and I'm going to right click and go to bake and hit OK. I'm going to go ahead and close Grasshopper for a moment. And what you can see is we're right back to where we were. Um, we have a mesh primitive, a mesh plane primitive, um, that was constructed uh, using Grasshopper. So it's very easy to start to manipulate this plane primitive uh, in terms of its dimension, in terms of the number of faces, etc. Um, uh, in a way that would be a lot faster, uh, for instance, than doing it here in Rhino. Okay. And again, remember that the parts of a mesh are a face, right, or faces, um, edges, and vertices. And depending on the number of faces that you have, right, here we have three by three, um, you'll be increasing, right, the number of vertices, the number of edges, right, and ultimately the number of faces. Okay. This is a single mesh. Okay. So this is the mesh that we uh, just baked out of Grasshopper. 